Hello everyone. Thank you for joining in today. Uh, on behalf of Art and Artisans Group India, I like to welcome our guest speaker, Visa Rodriguez. Visa is a Honduran-born um, artist based in London. Uh, she did her bachelor's uh, in architecture from Unitec and masters of fine arts at University of the Arts London. She has exhibited across Europe and in Honduras. Uh, she is the founder at Studio Improviso. Uh, Luisa's multidisciplinary practice spans from painting, installation, and design. Her most recent works are based on the repurposing of materials to create constructions that seek to highlight overlooked elements found within built environments. She uses contrasting surfaces with the aim to connect different social realities and, uh, and propose more unifying and sustainable alternatives. So here I present Luisa Rodriguez. Thank you so much, Luisa, for being here with us. Hi, thank you. Thank you to Art and Artisans Collective to, for this opportunity to talk to people and share a little bit about uh, what my work and research is. And yes, basically that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to share. Um, and I, I, yeah, I would like this to just be, you know, an opportunity where um, I'm sharing with you what, what I, what, what, uh, what my interests are and how that translates in, into my work. And um, people are free also to like um, share like similar works, at, like, uh, you know, at the end and, um, and at the end us as well, people are welcome to make comments or do questions. That would be, that'd be very useful. I think just to make it a bit more, um, uh, more a two way conversation. And uh, well, the reason, so, the reason why I I wanted to do this talk, or uh, the reason why it's called cool, it's centered around materiality and resourcefulness, is because um, centered to my um, to my practice is in my research is material, and the objectives really of today is to um, in terms of of talking about this topic is to understand the place of repurposing in the contemporary world and understand that this repurposing comes from trying to be resourceful and trying to work with what is around and also because um, the use of materials the way it is the way it is now in the contemporary world is only it's only it only comes from the second half of the 20th century and it's developed to what it is now because before that you would only have a handful of materials that would have been used for a sculpture and it that those boundaries were broken um, during the 20th century but also um i would like to think about uh what happens when for instance the material choices are layered with form and also the origins of the material and form the work and very just lastly also just what happens when it's like pushed towards like um, specific aesthetics and and also I think I'd like to just like invite you to think what this repurposing means within the context of sustainability or just like uh, social conditions and maybe even development um, let me share my screen Um, I just like confirmation that you're able to see the screen. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so I like I like to when I'm summarizing what I what I'm researching, etc. I like thinking about words, and I think I'd like to start this by thinking of adjectives and adjectives of particular words just think about um, a resourceful practice or idiosyncratic practice or an improvised practice or an inventive practice. Um, and basically because the, the, the examples that I'm going to talk about are, are of interest to me because these are um, examples where uh, the material choice uh, transcends the the formal language of the work so the, the the form and the subject matter is informed also by the material 
and also I'm just like interested in practices where um, where scale is pushed uh, to the to the, to the point where we're not only thinking about uh, ready mades or found objects, but the materials are actually um, manipulated and put it put in put in bigger scales or a scale that might be even architectural. And it's also uh, uh, usually so within these works, it, it's tied up to certain like social conscience or, or awareness and and again like um, aesthetics like aesthetics choices are also uh, inform what these works are so i'd like to start with the first one and i chose i like i want to start i want to start with this one because as an image it's such a recognizable image um but this work is by brazilian um artist dick muniz and well he worked he 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 grew up in the slums in brazil before he uh, relocated to New York and started um, doing art and developing his art practice and um, he well he does have a, a very sculptural background but he, like but he later developed more of a, a practice where he's interested in uh, creating 2d images but again these 2d images are composed by materials that have a three-dimensional sense and uh, well, at some point in his career he just um, just realized that color wasn't something that he was very used he was very used to so he started doing this series that's called, that is called um it's called pictures of color and it and also responded at the time to the kind of rising sort of influence of uh informatics and computers and colors having their own codes so for instance this this piece of work that he titled sunflower after van gogh and which i really like because it's it's, it's it is it is a very clever use of material, but it also has links to the tradition of art, the tradition of like the history of art. Like he always does reference to uh, old, uh, very, very familiar paint uh, uh, pictures. So for instance, this one was, uh, and this whole series is made of um, pound tone color swatches. And so he, he would like break together all these like little swatches into building this whole image and these are th these words are, are usually big they are big in their in, in, in terms of scale uh, and also obviously because the, the objects are are themselves are you know that the, the material is what it is and he's interested in like his outfit is usually a, a, a picture that you know it's that's what it's finally shown but again it's a photography that is very much informed by by material so that uh, it has has a that this dialogue with sculpture and um it's always going to move so the way this like uh selection of works is going to move is that first this is a 2d work more of a 2d but i i i'm interested in in, in things that you know gradually the scale and the i um i suppose the uh what it effects is, is is wider so afterwards he this series is called um it was called pictures of garbage and so this is him going back to his um homeland and he went to brazil and he wanted to work with people that work in the landfills areas and these are i think particularly um people that work in the centers where there is um like separation selection of recycled materials so again, like the material was in a way a starting point of 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 what the work is, but also like he so for us so he he says that he's not really interested in um so he he's interested in just working on the lowest thresholds of optical illusion. He's not trying to hide what it is, or or I mean, or as far as the viewer wants to anyway. But he wants it to be pretty much what it is but then again this is also informed by um the subject matter and the figure um because again it's a very it's a very familiar uh, uh composition of like you know traditional art and but again the uh, subjects of the of the image are the people that themselves work at the at the landfill so um it has this component of like social social conscience and wanting to to work with these people and actually these people uh they were paid for the time they they spent on this project and also the final artworks which were i think they were auctioned um uh 
part of 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 of, of those uh, of the earnings were were given to the people that work in the landfills. The next artist is Gordon Morda Clark, and um, Gordon Morda Clark is is widely known in the, the most of his career. He's very well known because his work it is usually is, represents like strong um, critiques of architecture and the relationship um, that they have with the capitalist system. And I think in a way this one is probably, um, so he's more known for uh, cutting big geometric shapes on buildings in, uh, in the Bronx. But this is for instance on a sculptural uh, element. And uh, I think it's, it speaks very well to that, like it's, it's consumer goods and they're all like a product of capitalism. But again, so the first time who would have um, uh, made this piece, because Gordon Mora Clark, uh, he, he died uh, some years ago. Um, I think the first one was around the 80s when he produced this garbage wall. And, and he did it at the time with materials surrounding the venue where he presented it, which, is, which was within the Bronx. And ever since, um, it is his wife and his daughter, I think, that reproduced this piece of work. Wherever it, wherever it is shown, it, it it is made with the materials around the venue. So, for instance, this is a work that was um, presented at David Swimmer in London, and uh, it's it, it has those materials. So, it's again, it's a it's a piece of work that responds to um, materially a response to the site, but also like the uh, material connotations with it. Like again, they they want to speak about this capitalism, but and in, in, in terms of form, it is, um, it's, 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 it's uh, formally, it's, it's so minimal, but again, the, the way the material is informing it, it just transcends that. And because it is the metaphorical representation of a wall, but again, because of scale and of, of its grandness in a way, it is also a partition element in, you know, within the space that it was shown. So I, I, it's just adding all these layers. Um, I think it's, it's just something, uh, um, a very successful and that I really like what Gordon Mara Clark is well, very well known for his dialogues between um, arts and architecture. And I think kind of uh, maybe moving on from the more kind of identifiable objects and maybe the kind of direct garbage. Um, this is an artist, uh, Reinhard Mucke, and he is German. And um, again, he he, he uses, um, he he takes from, he's from Dusseldorf and uh, influenced uh, by his uh, surroundings and upbringings, he is, his material choices are uh, repurposed um, industrial uh, materials from, from industry, um, like aluminium panels um, and glass and linoleum and wood floorings, that which he then like assembles and he did, makes this like very complex assemblages that um, he presents in this like really pristine uh, form that again, because so, so if we compare them with the previous more garbage related works, this one is pushing towards these pristine aesthetics, but again, the material has this history. So uh, it's just an added layer to, um, for instance, this is, this is just a very, uh, a, a form in a in a in a piece of work that is just so related to minimal art, and again because of the industrial materials, what could say, but what could re, one could relate it to uh, minim, the minimalist art of um, I don't know the the forties, fifties, sixties, and but because this material already has a history, and it and you can see it is quite palpable. It has that. It's just, it, it, it informs the work in the in a different level, and what well, he's well known for doing these sort of like maquette like compositions, and even the way he has to like um, come, like the armatures that he has to do to present them kind of become language in their own. But also he he does works where um, he would do these panels and maybe fill entire walls of a of a museum gallery space. And, and just adding layers and layers of complexity uh, where he'd like add sculptural elements that are um, self, uh, um, you know, freestanding and, and just like really very, very rich. Um, but yeah, again, like I wanted to show this example as in a way to kind of like maybe contrast 
the previous ones where it was more of a like elements were a lot more distinguishable and again i think within this um just talking about kind of how presenting things within uh you know aesthetics because i think that um one can relate so in terms of repur uh, re uh, practice of repurposing what can relate um to uh certain uh sectors of society or even you know like certain places of the world where you can see that directly like even like in the city most of these works for instance like are inspired by uh, particular places uh, more very often urban spaces um so in a way it can be presented in, in, in so it can pr be presented in many ways but this so this is the way where it, where it's presented where it's trying to be clean like it is repurposed it has a history it is probably a discarded material but it's presented in a way where it's trying to move on from that and to give an example of maybe what is happening within the current um the current cultural uh circle this is a work from a an artist uh mike ballard he is london based and he presented this work um last year at the bomb factory and again his work is very much informed by the city he is informed by but i think this is where kind of it also has a social dimension is where he's interested in the changing city and and uh kind of you know buildings being put put up or down and gentrification and also um ideas of displacement and um just ideas of di dividing the public from the private which are you know just discussions within um social um rights often and but what i i guess what i like about this work is that so this one is made from uh hoardings of building sites and but it is presented and it's being transformed into a shape that is again trying to be very aesthetic and almost like the, the, the colors and all it just makes it almost commercial looking but you can see the traces on the materials which um testify to uh, they, they they are witnesses to to where they've been in um also like what the artist is trying to say and so i guess so moving on from that is i think i wanted uh, i'm gonna now gonna talk about kind of these artists where i think when talking about repurposing is where and and resourcefulness is where these artists the practice of these artists and the, their work is born very much from in a way maybe limitations or you know it's a being resourceful is um so what, what, what they've been what they have been is just they've taken from what has been around them available around them and let and they just let that inform their art practices so uh mark bradford um he's an artist born in la and um and he he started he started his like his like art development in a way uh uh, fairly late you could say like in his 30s uh but before that so he used to work at a beauty shop as he calls it um with his with his mom and uh well uh, they're uh, black americans and and for instance this painting and um i really i really like it, it is a painting and whether you know, I'm 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 interested in things that are, have architectural proportions, but I really like this one because it's it's one of his first works in in in, in this line where because he was working at this beauty shop, um, he wouldn't really have access to very expensive I don't know maybe ten dollar tubes of uh, paint, but he discovered while working with his mom this uh, material which is the so these are end papers that uh women use for permanent treatments and they're almost like tissue paper like little rectangles of tissue paper and um because of their translucent quality it just really called his attention and this became his first one of his first mediums and he's very well known for this it's just creating like all these complex layers of color it's just like i think really beautiful he is more known now because uh, uh for his um 
big abstract paintings which are made out of billboards that he layers and layers and then uh, rips and cuts into very, very uh, complex, uh, beautiful looking compositions. So um, this one already has, so this one also has like billboard in it and it's got all these like little t-shirts with end papers. So again, I really like how his practice was a direct reflection of the resources that he had available. And again, just making this really, really beautiful. So his, what his practice, is, and also maybe because of this upbringing, um, he, he is very interested in exploring social structures. And a lot of it is, uh, he's interested in is how, um, within the social structures, how that they objectify maybe marginal or vulnerable communities. So he's always interested in, uh, for instance, bringing art to communities where otherwise it would be really difficult or maybe trying to bring into uh, the art world people who wouldn't usually want to or would be able to. Um, so for instance, this is, uh, piece of work of his that I think re that relate a lot to what I'm interested in. And this is a piece of work. That he, so he was invited to a biennial event in New Orleans, and this was right after Hurricane Katrina. And um, well, he says, I mean, he, it was really difficult to make a piece of work that responded to the to, to the current environment when he just got there, because it's so, it's, it's such a reality, it's, it's so sad, it's, uh, there has been so much destruction going on that it is a, bit, it is a little difficult to, to, to touch on such a delicate, um, the, the, the things that people have just been through. And well, but he did some community work while he was there, you know, before he was able to like um, make his art intervention. And he said that he kept thinking about a vessel. And so eventually he came up with a form of, of, of an arc just basically referencing Noah's Ark. And because um, he said that through this like uh, exploration and the community work, he kept seeing the signs of, um, of, 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 of like the um, rescue services that would, um, that would put signs up of saying what they had found with it, like within property. So he didn't want to talk about the people because again, it was just so delicate. Like, they would have, for instance, a sign where it'd say uh, a, a cat was found or, uh, and again, so he's just, so this informed more of his, this art shape and this reference to Noah's art where he just thinks about kind of animals being, or just like lives being saved through this art and in a way just like wanting to have a message of hope. But again, so his material, because he does have more of a signature material, which is billboards and I think it's it's just really nice um, and interesting how he would have this form that that is then complemented by this material. So he went around New Orleans. It's called the Lower Ninth Ward. Uh, he went around uh, collecting plywood panels that again tell this story. It tells the story that he wants to tell in, in this form that in a way is also very minimal it's probably the simplest way in which a, a boat can be represented and also the, the um, main structure is also uh, shipping containers so again it's just like repurposing of things to make a shape and but this shape would be sterile if it didn't have this uh materiality to it and again because um he, he involved the community in such a way that basically uh he said he uh, people um Finally, came to a place where uh, they hadn't been visited, they hadn't, hadn't visited for a while because of all the destruction. It's just a place that wasn't any inviting at all. Um, and the last artist I'm going to show you is Yasser Gates. He is also an American American artist, born in Chicago, and again, very uh, probably just a very uh, limited, economically speaking, uh, upbringings, his dad was a roofer. And he said that actually roofing was probably his first art practice. And this informs, uh, Theaster Gates now has a very, 
so a very complex training. He trained a, as a ceramicist, but also as an urban developer. I think he also did craft studies and religious studies. So he now like, brings all of this together into, um, into these works. So he's again interested, he's a lot interested, he's more known for his a lot of regeneration work that he has done around the south side of Chicago which um, is very deprived um, and again I like this piece of work uh, because again it just can be it can be related to um, the history of, of art and we one could just like you know think about uh, abstract expressionist artist Martin Newman and his zips but this uh, formal uh, rectangular shape is now being, is this one is made out of uh, floorings of a gym that was taken down. He's very interested in this. He's also uh, used materials from a, a church that's been closed or, you know, it's been like demolished. So he's interested in, in, and maybe the, um, the, the, the regeneration of places, but he's just put these, um, for instance, he could have just recreated the whole floor of, of, of this gym, but because because of this artistic background, he's also doing all these material studies and just becomes this really uh, beautiful uh, texture painting, but it's also quite sculptural. Um, and now going to I get more a bigger scale, this is a, a work that he was invited to do at the temple, demolished temple church in Bristol. Uh, this church was born during the Second World War, and now it's just basically the, um, it's, it's just a case, it's almost like an other case, and it's, 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 um, it's close to the public, it doesn't, you cannot really go there, but he was invited by, by um, an organization in Bristol to do this intervention, and again, he was interested in because he repurposed materials, he, one of, one of, so one of the aspects is that, um, materials were all brought from uh, all houses within Bristol or um, I think uh, the Salvation Army gave some bricks and, and just different windows and uh, door frames and and he, he very much uh, is in control of the aesthetics and form here but he was interested in involving the craftsmanship that was available in Bristol in a way to just like highlight bring together like all, all these, uh, the, the culture there. And uh, so I think uh, both builders were employed to do this and like it just creating these like beautiful textures and colors. And it be just became, it became a venue for, for a number of days and, and just calling the community to do cultural interventions. Um, and so I think, so that's uh, in terms of, I guess, known artists and, now I, I want to talk about this, and this, uh, well, if we can see on the lower sort of half of the picture, we can see that this is a um, a, a, a hill of soil, and but it's but it has had steps being made and put on it, and I'm sure like some of you might relate to this kind of um, intervention or um, a way of. Uh, fixing problems and, and it's all it's all made out of tires and again because I'm trying to talk about this like idiosyncrasy and this resourcefulness when like solving problems but I am interested in also like highlighting this and given this it's in a way it's um the, the right recognition that it that it needs so that's why I'm I just feel like it is a work that it's unknown and what we don't it's it's entitled and but again it just needs recognition and Again, it's what this is another picture that maybe you know some of you can relate to. This this is my hometown, and you can see these uh, uh, all around. And well, not really, not uh, not ignoring what the complexities and just like difficulties uh, this the, these represent. I just really think that there is a lot of inventiveness and. Um, and, and it's just uh, things from these practices that can be taken into consideration into developing more um, sustainable practices even. Um, we, yeah, I'm, as I'm saying, I'm not ignoring the fact that 
know, this is difficult and like it, it, there's an element of fragility, but I think that it's like on the bigger um, scheme of things that there is a, um, a mindset here that, that I think needs um, considering a lot more. And so that takes me more into what is my work and um, how, things, uh, how elements of this like um, have may influence my own work. And this is a an installation intervention that I did. Um, it's called Margin, and um, and I did this by using um, tin cans from surrounding uh, restaurants in the center of Florence. So this was installed in Florence, and I, I just wanted to be informed by the materials that I had around me and and see kind of what I wanted to, I know I, knew I wanted to make something that had a reference to an architectural element. So a, a wall, a screen, maybe more of a curtain, but I wanted to give it this, um, this space where it, it's, it's deceiving in a way. It almost looks luxurious because like it's got golden and uh, like silver tones and like, so it is deceiving, but I, oh, so, and often in my work, I try to, have more than uh more than one side more, more than one face because i want it I, I want maybe whether if i'm sort of maybe disguising the material i also want it to be true to itself so this one had two sides and the other one had more of that um red uh reference of what it comes from it had like rust and and you could see uh some of the labels are still there and i guess it's just, it's just um this idea of, of a very very thin um uh, margin of basically two uh, realities that maybe are not that separate. Um, again, just like trying to try, uh, trying to get put myself into this mindset of um, of 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 this resourcefulness and inventiveness. And again, this is another work of that. Um, I wanted to build a, a an outdoor structure that might reference the idea of a. Uh, a pavilion which is like pavilions are usually used as um, just structures that um, showcase um, some sort of material use or a structural um, method and I wanted to build this one again informing myself what, what, what my surroundings are this is um, the suburbs uh, you know of greater London this is Wimbledon and these are all drawers that came from houses the, the surrounding houses because there they are there are so many and and again I just uh, wanted to put them in this configuration almost like a brickwork um, a collage of different of different elements and and again so in, in, in terms of form um, again it's, 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 it's a very uh, minimal form but it, it, it replicates the if you're gonna see next like the um, shapes of uh, English houses with their bay windows and um, but just like a portion of it and then the back side had more of that um, what is it you know just the um, kind of like scraps and just trying to so one side is, is the one of kind of more aesthetic if you want to call it in some way and the other one has more of the, the practicalities of it and not really taking care much of um, of where things go, or or, or or a or a rhythm, and although it ended up having that anyway, um, and this is um, this is another work. This is the last one, and and um, this is uh, one that I did. Uh, it was this gallery space was uh, located within uh, very close to a high street. Again, this is in London. And there's, uh, well, high streets are, are known for their shopping. So I, I, I have been asked for this space to do these traces. So this one has an added element where it has a, a component of like drawing and, 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 and a, a subject matter that's like been tried to represent. So I was been, I have been asked to make these traces of urban traces of um, the, this. Um, so one of them is the trace of, of place in London and the other one is um, my hometown so just to maybe explain this one is one and this is the one that was on the back and I was playing a little bit with the illusion of the space here because um, there's mirrors so for both workspace 
each other and because it's two mirrors that are facing each other it just creates the effect of an infinite which is really nice um but again i wanted even though i already had the uh the in a way the the, the topic the subject that i was going to intervene the surface with i felt that the material also had to respond to that but in and within that also like uh, also responding to what my practice is and what I'm, what I'm interested in representing and the way I, I wanted I want to construct things. So I, that's why I chose chopping bags for this because um, they are informed by the place, by the surroundings. It's something that I was, uh, I took from the surroundings and, and the, these became my material for, for communicating my message. And again, I kind of just, in terms of trying to create different sides and one of them I created a more of a white one and the other one is more of the grays and 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 browns you know in order to create that contrast of maybe trying to clean and and you know um maybe something that's not as clean and so yeah that's uh, that's actually my last work that I'm going to share and I guess I, I, I hope that um, I've um, at least I make people think about uh, what does the idea of being resourceful, where does, where does this resourcefulness comes from? Which is usually this idea of limitness or need and it's translating into repurposing what is available, what is available that might not be a a common material for for art but again because i am interested in architectural proportion i'm interested in in, in pushing that into into uh, having this conversation of saying what so what what concrete um elements or constructions can we make out of this same uh, methodology which I, I think it should be given kind of like status of a of a given methodology and in terms of words I guess I'd just like to end with, because um, I was talking at the beginning about resourceful, idiosyncratic, um, improvised, inventive. I think I want, to, I want to leave that with actions of maybe recontextualization and revaluation and that within like giving another value to things and uh, again repurposing and finally to, to see how this can uh, inform more sustainable practices. And well, that is it. <laughs> I don't know if anyone wants to add something or comment on anything. Uh, hi, uh, this is Harish. Uh, interesting hi. talk. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just Sorry, I can ask, hear you properly. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Hi, so yeah. So uh, the word repurposing, I was interested in the word repurposing. Uh, as I understand it, it's not uh, using the same material to create uh, some other materials that may be used. For example, uh, it's not say recycling or uh, or uh, uh, using uh, the material for different purposes, but rather it's in the realm of aesthetics. It's in the realm of uh, uh, sculpting, using materials to material to sort of um, uh, do away with their original purposes. For example, a wire is supposed to transmit say current. It's not used that like that anymore. It's used to sort of uh, sculpt uh, something. So, so I, I, I was interested in how uh, the material is in a, in a way losing its value or, or not serving its purpose, but rather, uh, uh, but rather moving away from it and uh, 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 taking on a new, like you said, new value. Is that where this is going? How is that sustainable then? Uh, is it, uh, so I was just curious about. Yes, no, that's that's a very good question. And I actually like it because, in a way, sustainability is like the very last thing that I, that like, probably is, 
concretely or directly achieved by this, but I think what, I, what, I'm, what, I, so what I'm suggesting within my research is that um, taking from the resourcefulness that is the incentive towards this practice is that looking at what resources are already available is a way of it's a way of solving things in a maybe more sustainable way so for instance maybe not having to source new materials or source um even either that's like raw materials or 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 or, or um or process materials but but thinking just i guess just like just always just having that alertness of saying what is what else can, what is that we can use to solve this that is already available and something that you already have uh, something that is already within your surroundings to to solve a problem and i think so what what my argument is and i am willing to kind of uh, be challenged on that and keep doing more research on it is that that is more sustainable that is that is pushing towards more sustainable practice than saying I want to make a screen, I want to make a wall and you know I buy new bricks and that's that's like that's where I, I that's where I right, right. I, I see it's more uh, it's, it's more of like it's born out of a purpose like you have materials around you uh, you just want to use that to create something else rather than worrying about what else you could be creating and like what what their original purpose was and so on it's just it's just uh, like you said, like you said earlier, with uh, one of the artists who did not have the, uh, could not buy the materials, but use the material uh, that he could uh, get hold of to create his art. I see the, I see the purpose. Now. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. No. Thank you very much for that. Yes, definitely. And I think that something to think about is that, um, well, that is the, that is the question. Really, is that usually you're trying to solve a problem maybe you found yourself with a limitation is that this inventiveness will just take you to having to use something for to solve a problem that you wouldn't have thought of before a material that you wouldn't have thought of before and so for instance like if i kind of talk about my own work is trying to for instance, reproduce the idea of a wall of a partition with um with cans just you know that's what was available and um yeah, yeah I, I also like the other side of this uh, which is uh, for us for us in general garbage is something we dispose of something we do not want to touch something we don't do want uh, want to do away with uh, and uh, and I think this talk sort of uh, uh, lets us reimagine what we can do to sort of get that uh, to have a new value uh, to think of it differently I think I think uh, in that regard I think this talk is really helpful uh, to not think of the garbage as something just disposable, but rather uh, to find uh, new ways of uh, maybe utilizing it, uh, moving uh, moving it away from this label of uh, uh, label like the title itself, the garbage. You know, I think in that regard, I think this is really uh, interesting. Thank you for that. Yeah. Well, no, thank you. I think just to kind of maybe our last thing is to also just think about i think that not just not forgetting that by doing this you i guess it's a way of uh, also like talking about just i guess bigger maybe social realities which is what ultimately a lot of these artists do is that um because of what they do they are able to touch on on other topics that it's not so it's it doesn't just stay in like them doing their art but you know they are we step forward into um actually trying to potentially create some change to add something to it it's like uh looking at all oh, the presentation it also uh kind of provokes this idea of um being a being a responsible consumer in a way because obviously the garbage uh, uh the art with the garbage one and there were these other materials that they are using. So it's like we have to like have control on the use set of materials that we do. Um, I think that's also like um, that's how I perceived it um, from this whole presentation. And I think it's something which is 
really important during these times to um, get into a sustainable uh, practice or sustainable way of life, actually. So yeah, it was quite insightful in a way. Yeah. You have a wonderful point there, which is to sort of be aware of how we're using things, especially in this uh, time where we are, in a way, always, uh, I wouldn't want to call it forced, but rather uh, encouraged to dispose things, to buy new things, to, uh, you know, to, to like, uh, to keep moving on to new things. Like, we dispose so much uh, on a daily basis. And uh, to be aware of that, I think, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, if people are, uh, even like for people maybe watching it later, there's um, within, for instance, the design world, there is a lot of people developing um, materials where it is, they, they, they are uh, waste based materials, um, so more of a, a sort of like transforming things. And I think it's very interesting. Um, is again, it's like a step forward. From, from just you know having that conscience it's really it's really good that is happening so thank you so much Lisa um, for being here with us thank you thank you bye bye thank you